Hey, hey, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So how should you view your first developer job? Is it something you should be concerned about in terms of the money? If you don't establish a good salary with your first job, is that going to have a bad impact on your entire career? We're going to get into that in this whole video here. Let's change the hats. Nah, let's go back. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's do it. How you perceive your first job as a developer is going to have a huge impact in terms of whether you get the job and how your career will progress. So in this video, I'm going to go over a few bullet points to consider and you'll see we're going to supercharge your uh, process of becoming a developer, meaning we're going to make it easier for you to get your first job and we're going to make it easier for you to progress in your career. So in a nutshell, you have to look at the first job as being the last stage of the learning process. Let me say that again. You have to look at your first developer job as the last stage or the last part of the learning process. Because when you come out of school or you come out of a boot camp, especially boot camp, if you come out of your training days and you're getting your first job, your first professional job as a developer, you're still a noob. You're a big time greenhorn noob. So as such, the employer, your new bosses or boss, is going to be investing a lot of time and energy, resources into training you up to become a pro developer. So keep that in mind. That's the attitude you have to have when you're coming into a new, your first job as a developer, is that you are still in the learning stage. The last part of it, but you're still in the learning stages. So let me tell you a story. I have a friend of mine, a guy used to work for me, one of my first mentees. I trained him up as a developer right out of school. He was a neuroscientist, in fact. Anyhow, he had a startup, well, he has a startup. And at one point, I think there was like 600, I think 600 developers on, on staff. And initially, they worked with uh, some boot camps to try to get to get their developers from the boot camps. And they stopped doing that. And then they stopped getting developers who came right out of school because they were just so poorly trained. They didn't know what they were doing. They, they were actually hurting, hurting the company's ability to uh, quickly get their product out to market. If you're starting any new business, software business especially, you want to get out there as quickly as possible, cheaply as possible. So you're you're uh, many times you're better off to have uh, somebody, at least one person on staff as your developer, as your lead who knows what they're doing. Otherwise, you're going to be running around in circles and uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. The point I'm trying to make is that when you come out of school, best case scenario, you, you are a noob ready to be trained. So you have to have that attitude. And if you have that attitude, you will do much better in the marketplace you have a much better opportunity to advance in your career and to get that job. So you may be asking, why is having that attitude going to help me get the job? Well, first of all, it's going to make you a little bit more humble and realistic about your expectations. So one of the things I tell people in my mentoring program, the first job that you get, it's almost irrelevant what it is you are doing, and it is irrelevant what you are going to get paid. All that matters is you get your foot in the door. You have to, again, look at it as your last step of your educational process, and you're literally getting paid to learn. Yes, you're not going to be making the typical medium salary of a developer. That's because you are not at that level yet. You have to skill up, just like when you start a new I don't know, video game or something, your character is... You know, as a noob, you're gonna, if you're playing World of Warcraft, you have to go out there and, and um, kill a bunch of pigs for XPs before you can go in there and fight the, the major bosses, right? Same thing in software development. You have to skill up. And when you get hired, the company, when you're a noob, the company, remember, they're taking a risk on you. When they hire you and they put you into the mix of their business, they are incurring cost because they got to train you, they got to get you up and running, blah, blah, blah. It costs them time and money. Time is money. And so remember, you are uh, lucky to get a job as your first job because somebody's taking a risk on you. So have that attitude. 
Don't let them walk all over you, blah, blah, blah. But don't be entitled. Be grateful that you're getting this first job. And then work your butts off to, to learn and to be very productive. And what will happen? You will be rewarded unbelievably. What you'll see is for most developers, you see the increase in salary, the, the slope, if you will, the, the rate of increase is quite high within the first uh, three to four years. So they start off, you start off here as a noob, and then second year, boom, third year, boom, fourth year, boom. And it starts to level off depending on the circumstances. If you're in a fast-growing startup, you can make huge money, or you're just exceptionally skilled and uh, very, very useful to the company, then you can keep going up hard. But again, the point of this video is to point out that the way you should look at the first job, you should look at it as the last stage of the learning process where your new boss is taking a risk with you because they got to invest money and time with you to train you up. And this is going to be perhaps the hardest time, your hardest job because you're going to be learning everything new. Depends on the individuals. Everybody's different. But take it as a challenge, right? Remember, I'll leave you with this. How you react to a situation that you're in how you perceive it is largely a personal choice, right? So some people will complain that they're working very long hours as a developer. Well, look, oh my God, working long hours. Ah. Meanwhile, they'll, sp they'll play 14 hours straight of uh, Diablo or uh, Call of Duty, which is pretty intense, you know? It's pretty intense uh, playing a, a shooter, right? So... What's the difference? The difference is that you're clicking buttons to move a shooter in a shooter. And in programming, you're clicking buttons to write code and to get things done. So you have to start looking at how you create associations, emotional associations, feelings, vis-a-vis -vis the type of activity that you're doing. You know, they're extreme. The point being, you have to look at that first job where you're going to be worked probably, where you're going to be faced with a lot of challenge, challenges probably, where you may have to do extra work on the side to catch up and to get up to speed, probably. But this is great. You're getting free training, guided training, and you're getting paid for this, right? So in my mentoring program, that's exactly what we have people do. What I have people do is once they've gone through the fundamentals and they do their certifications, and the certifications are, are there to just start building your resume and are there to just uh, to test yourself, so you know that you know the material. Once you've done that, then we have people build a portfolio website. I review that site, make sure it looks pro. It is coded pro in a pro way. And then we have people go out to do two to three free freelance projects. Why? To develop your skills. Because when you have actual projects that you built for actual companies, could be a butcher, the local butcher, it could be the local auto repair shop, could be a local coffee shop, independent whatever, a dentist, a lawyer around the corner from you, or you could do stuff on Upwork. Once you have two to three real projects on your belt, nothing huge, you don't want to work six months on these things, but you will be far, far more attractive to prospective jobs, to prospective employers, because you will have demonstrated you can actually build somebody's real project. Remember that. One real project with a real client or business, whether you paid or not, or a nonprofit, having that in your portfolio is worth a hundred Udemy course projects or a hundred projects that you just do on your own for fun. Trust me, a big part about being a pro is being able to act like a pro with other people, to interact with other people. So eventually, when you do the work and uh, you do a lot of crap projects at first and then slowly, slowly, as I did, my first freelance project, I was paid crap, like garbage. By the end of my career as a freelancer, I was making literally 10 times the money for my per hour. So I started at $20 an hour for my first project, which is really crap. This is back in 1990s. And by the end of my freelance career, I was making 200 the hour. Uh, yeah, that was my last gig. I was billing out at 200 the hour, and they were happy to pay. 
And I know people who are going up to 300 the hour, if you're really, really good. Now, I didn't start off at 300, I started at 20. Why? Because when you're a beginner, you're not worth much more than 20 the hour, right? But when I, at the end of my career, at the tail end of my, well, of my freelance career, rather, I was worth at least 200 the hour, at least. Now, much more. So, uh, yeah, you just have to look at it that way. Have that good attitude. Everybody will appreciate it. And then you'll get to the point where you can be like me, where you can uh, put your feet up and, uh, you know. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of software development, entrepreneurship, and so much more. I have a mentoring program specific for coding and software development. You can check out in the links below. And very soon, due to extreme demand, I'm actually coming out with a brand new mentoring program strictly on business. Uh, different, different thing altogether. We have the current mentoring program for de developers, super experienced and noobs. And I have another program coming out. It's not out, it's not out yet. It's going to be out in January 2025. Those spaces are going to be limit, limited because of the uh, even more personalization there. And that's going to be strictly on entrepreneurship, business, and so on. Everything I talk about, by the way, everything that I teach is based on more than three decades of experience in the game for real. So, yeah, that's it. All right, thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or questions about anything I discuss in this video, uh, yeah, make a comment below. If you like my hat, give me two thumbs up. No, one thumb up. If you like my hat, give me one thumb up. If you don't like my hat, give me two thumbs down. Show your derision. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you.